In 2018, the British Rio Tinto Group invested $5.4 billion to acquire a superhuge copper mine in Mongolia. In order to exploit these resources, Rio Tinto built power stations and or processing plants in Mongolia. So far, Rio Tinto has invested a total of up to $15 billion. It is worth noting that Rio Tinto's original plan was to rely on the huge market of China, which is adjacent to Mongolia, for export and thus achieve substantial profits. However, shockingly, in order to establish more international relations with the United States, Mongolia recently issued a ban on Rio Tinto. Copper mines mined in Oyu Talgoy must not be sold to China. This ban is undoubtedly a huge blow to Rio Tinto. The project that was once ready to go is now in an embarrassing situation of suspension. So why does Mongolia ban the export of or to China? In addition to China, can Rio Tinto export copper or to other countries? If you like our video content, please click to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can receive all our latest video content. Now, let's get into today's topic. Mongolia is located in Central Asia, bordering Russia to the north and China to the south. It is a completely landlocked country. Despite its land area of 1.56 million square kilometers, its total population is only over 3 million, making Mongolia one of the countries with the lowest population density in the world. Economically, Mongolia is relatively backward, with a poverty rate of 28% and mainly relies on traditional nomadic farming. But what is worrying is that long-term overgrazing has caused serious problems in Mongolia's ecological environment. Grassland degradation, wind and sand raging, a quarter of the country's land has been decertified. With the reduction of grassland, traditional animal husbandry is also facing huge difficulties. In order to avoid further ecological and economic crises in the country, Mongolia has realized that it must transform its economy, get rid of its excessive dependence on traditional nomadic farming, and find a new development path. Fortunately, Mongolia's vast land is rich in mineral resources. According to statistics, Mongolia has more than 80 proven mineral species and a total of more than 6,000 mining sites. Among them, the reserves of coal, copper, and gold are among the best in the world, making it one of the 29 resource-rich developing countries in the world. Among Mongolia's mineral resources, the Oyu Talgoy copper mine stands out with its amazing reserves and strategic position, becoming a treasure trove of global mineral resources. Experts estimate that the Oyu Talgoy copper mine contains more than 30 million tons of copper ore, with a total mining area of 80 square kilometers, and the overall economic value may exceed 1 trillion US dollars. In addition to copper, the Oyu Talgoy mining area also contains 1,328 tons of gold and 7,600 tons of silver, making it the sixth largest mining area in the world. Professionals predict that the mining period of the Oyu Talgoy copper mine is expected to last up to 50 years, which means that in the next half century, it will continue to inject strong impetus into Mongolia's economic development. It is worth mentioning that the Oyu Talgoy copper mine, which should have been a pleasant surprise, will now face a series of huge challenges. Located in South Gobi province, Mongolia, the Oyu Talgoy copper mine is less than 100 kilometers from the Chinese border. This remote geographical location itself brings many difficulties to mining, and increases the complexity of transportation and logistics. What's more difficult is that the mining area is surrounded by vast Gobi, and 80% of the copper deposits are buried more than 1,300 meters underground. To successfully mine these deposits, not only huge capital investment is required, but also extremely high technical requirements, which is undoubtedly a huge challenge for Mongolia, which has a relatively backward economy. Since 2008, the financial crisis that has swept Asia has caused a sharp drop in copper prices. This price fluctuation has made Mongolia's dream of prospering the country through mining 
more and more difficult. Under such circumstances, the mining of the OU Talgoy copper mine faces unprecedented difficulties and uncertainties. Faced with this situation, in 2009, the Mongolian government made an important decision hoping to sell the development rights of the OU Talgoy copper mine to other countries. Many people may think that Mongolia will give the mining rights to China. After all, China is not only Mongolia's largest neighbor, but also has close trade relations with Mongolia. At the same time, China is the world's largest copper consumer and has a huge demand for copper ore. Moreover, due to the convenient and low-cost transportation of ore, Mongolia, as a landlocked country, can directly transport ore to China by rail without sea transportation, which is obviously an ideal choice. But surprisingly, Mongolia directly refused to cooperate with China. The Mongolian government said that they hoped to balance Sino-Russian relations and therefore decided not to give the development rights to China. In 2010, as one of the world's three iron ore giants, Rio Tinto Group acquired 49% of the shares of OU Talgoy Copper Mine for 5.4 billion US dollars, and the Mongolian government retained 51% of the actual controlling rights. Rio Tinto Group saw the huge demand for copper or in the Chinese market and regarded this acquisition as a rare business opportunity. In August 2010, Rio Tinto Group began construction in the mining area and successfully delivered the first batch of copper ore to China in 2013. This should have marked a new beginning, but Rio Tinto did not anticipate the many difficulties that would follow. So what happened behind the scenes? In 2018, Mongolia made a series of new demands on Rio Tinto, making things more complicated. First, Mongolia asked Rio Tinto not to use electricity from China and announced a ban on the export of copper concentrate and copper concentrate concentrate. If Rio Tinto wants to continue to exploit mineral resources in Mongolia, it must set up a dedicated copper production plant and power station locally. This requirement is confusing because the Chinese power grid is closest to the mining area, and using Chinese electricity is undoubtedly the most economical option. However, the Mongolian government insisted that Rio Tinto solve the power supply problem on its own, which means that Rio Tinto needs to invest huge amounts of money to build power generation facilities. Despite this, after much consideration, Rio Tinto decided to agree to build a power station and a copper processing plant in the mining area. After all, China is the world's largest copper demand market, and in order to obtain higher profits and ensure long-term market share, Rio Tinto has invested more than $15 billion in the OU Talgoy mine. In 2024, when Rio Tinto finally completed the construction of the power station and processing plant and was ready to smoothly mine copper, it encountered unexpected problems. They expect that an annual output of more than 500,000 tons of copper will make it the fifth largest copper mine in the world. However, at a critical moment, the Mongolian government suddenly put forward a new requirement, prohibiting the export of mined copper resources to China, a move aimed at cooperating with the US ban. This ban has had a huge impact on Rio Tinto, forcing them to announce the suspension of the mining project of OU Talgoy Copper Mine. Because they know that without the huge Chinese market, the mined mineral resources can hardly find other buyers. This situation is confusing. Can't these mineral resources be exported to other countries? What complex reasons are hidden behind it? In fact, the reasons behind this situation are not difficult to understand. From a geographical point of view, Mongolia is almost surrounded by China and Russia. As an inland country, it must rely on the channels of these two neighboring countries for the stable export of mineral resources. Mongolia has long relied on China's Tianjin port to import and export goods, and has also cooperated with ports such as Dalian port and Jinzhou port. However, this time Mongolia decided to impose a ban on China in order to strengthen its international relations with the United States. In addition, Mongolia has established a third neighbor strategy with the United States, intending to find another important international partner in addition to China and Russia. 
Initially, this third neighbor was mainly the United States and then expanded to other Western countries and even Eastern countries such as Japan and South Korea. Mongolia's strategic intention is obvious, and Rio Tinto Group may also be aware that China may impose a blockade on Mongolia's exports at any time, thus affecting the sales of its mineral resources and market stability. In fact, during the Soviet era, Mongolia had obtained the right to use the Soviet port city of Vladivostok, which gave Mongolia a port to use. However, with the disintegration of the Soviet Union, Mongolia lost this important export channel, and there have been frictions in its relations with Russia. This series of changes has put Mongolia in a difficult position in terms of foreign exports. Without a stable export channel, Rio Tinto's investment and plans face huge uncertainty. This situation has forced them to announce the suspension of mining at the OU Talgoy Gold and Copper Mine. Because if Rio Tinto continues to mine the OU Talgoy Copper Mine, once China implements a ban, the investment during the mining period will become futile. Although, as an independent and autonomous country, Mongolia naturally has the right to freely choose its partners. However, such a choice has both advantages and disadvantages, and the final result still needs time to verify. Closing the Chinese market will not only hurt the interests of Rio Tinto, but will also greatly affect Mongolia's own economy. I very much hope that the relevant Mongolian committees can think deeply about this and examine the possible consequences with a reasonable and fair attitude. What do you think of this matter? Will China block Mongolia's imports and exports? To not miss out on our future projects and news updates, please make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. We will continue to provide you with more exciting and interesting content.